Hey guys, Furum here, and today I'm going to be testing the GT by Citroen in multiplayer in Asphalt 9 at Golden Max in its multiplayer season. I managed to end the season in the top 100, so here are some of the best races that I had on my journey there. Also, I ended in top 100 in the Ghost series, where I was using my newly 4-starred Yesco, and you can expect a video about that sometime soon as well. But by far, my most popular request over the past 24 hours has to be to talk about the new Bugatti Devo special event. And I have a lot to say about it, which I will talk about in this video because I don't really want to make a whole video dedicated to it, because I just did one for the LVN, and it's not really anything different than what we've seen before, necessarily. It's just kind of a lot worse, so I'll, t I'll talk about that here, but I want to say some about this car first. It is the fastest car in Class A by a long shot. It goes 251 miles per hour at its maximum speed with Nitro, and this is 8 miles per hour faster than both the Valhalla and the McLaren F1 LM, which would be the next fastest cars in Class A and Class B. And I finally figured out how to do this shortcut well. This here is actually one of my best times using it, except for at the end for for some reason my flat spin didn't flat spin, but thankfully I was able to save it and still come in first in this race. So this car's acceleration is actually the second worst in all of Class A, second only to the Jaguar CX-75, which actually I started up recently. I bought about, I think, 9,000 tokens worth of the Masterpiece packs or whatever the packs are that go along with the Devo Special Event, and I unlocked three cars. I unlocked the Aculone, I unlocked and two-starred the Vanda, and I unlocked and two-starred the Carrera GT, and I went from one to three-star on the Jaguar CX-75. That's a lot of unlocks and star-ups. I would say it's a pretty good deal for what I got out of it. Now, some may disagree with that, but I'm pretty happy with it, and I was able to get like 1,500 tokens back from the Bugatti Devo Daily event. But I cannot even start the Bugatti Devo special event, and this is something that has certainly frustrated a lot of players. I was on the Asphalt 9 Legends Discord not too long ago, and yeah, it was pretty much chaos. Because on the very first day of the Devo Special Event, you have to play in the Apollo IE the Legend Pass car for this season, so if you don't have that car, you cannot even begin to play the Bugatti Devo special event, which is absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. There was another special event we had where you had to have a Legend Pass car, the Corvette C8, later on in it, but nothing yet where you couldn't even start it without it. This makes four out of the five new cars released in this update so far you have to spend real money on, and let me go through them. You had the Apollo IE, of course, the $10 Legend pass car. You had the Citroen GT, this one right here, which you had to spend about $40 minimum to get in the special, or the Drive Syndicate for the Bugatti LVN. And that car, you'd have to spend bare minimum, like $400 to get it. And then the Devo, which you have to spend that $10 on the Apollo IE in order to unlock. The only free new car we've gotten so far is the BMW i8, which you can unlock actually extremely easily, or you could in the LVN uh, Drive Syndicate, and I actually managed to three-star that by opening the little uh, 500 Syndicate coin packs with the little amount that I had left over, but literally all the other new cars have been locked behind paywalls. We've never gotten this in an update before. We've had other ones. We had one, maybe two locked behind paywalls, but nothing as crazy as this, and man, I just, I really hope this is not a premonition of the future of Asphalt 9, because that would kind of suck. Not only would it mean that Gameloft would be straying away from their idea of being able to get all the cars in the game without spending money, but just maybe accelerating it with in-game purchases, with real money in that purchases. Now, literally, they're making you completely pay for stuff, which I wouldn't think they would do, and I even said in a video like a year ago that I didn't think Gameloft was going to make you do that, and then we get four in the same update. At this point, I'm not going to be surprised if they make, like, all the cars in the update like that. Hoping that doesn't happen, but with the way things are going, I cannot say I would be surprised. Now, I know that Gameloft has seen what everybody has been saying in the Discord, and so I'm hoping they do something about it. I don't think they will change the special event, really, because, well, they've said on numerous occasions previously that they don't change special events that they've already made. So I'm not really sure what they would do in this instance. Even if they can't do anything in this case, 
I really hope that in later updates we just have one maximum of two cars that you have to spend real money to get. I can't believe I'm even saying two is fine, but yeah, the Legend Pass car, maybe one other if they want to, but at least allow us to use our hard-earned tokens to get these new cars, because otherwise, what's the point of even saving up all these tokens if we can't get a lot of the new cars without spending money elsewhere. Something else I want to mention is that I believe this event partially came out of a dev chat vote that was held a little while ago where people were talking about like more exclusive special events and stuff like that. It did get a lot of downvotes, but it got like twice as many upvotes as downvotes or the thumbs up and thumbs down. I've been on Reddit too much recently, so I just say upvote and downvote. But yeah, um, I think we need to be a little bit more careful about what we actually vote for. Whenever there is a dev vote, dev chat, everything like that from now on, when there's voting, we need to read very carefully all the questions and not just go with what sounds good because in this case, it may have sounded nice, but we got an event that was clearly not what we actually wanted. So definitely be very deliberate in the way that you vote. Be sure to read through everything very carefully. And also I would like to say, Please be respectful and civil on the Asphalt 9 server. Most people were, but there were some that have been so frustrated about the event, and rightfully frustrated, but expressing it in a way that was more harmful and toxic than anything else. So I would just say, please keep that down, and mostly give Gameloft constructive criticism, and don't just complain. Like, not only do we want to tell them the sorts of things we don't want, but we also want to tell them the sorts of things we do want to see. So Gameloft has some really specific ideas from the community that they could implement, and also let them know the things that are being done quite well. Like, for example, the Elite Grand Prix for the Yesco. That was a lot of fun, very skill based. I mean, it, the car was regulated, thankfully, unlike the Rimac one. And so it was a nice, fun way to get some basically free rewards. You didn't have to pay to enter it or anything like that. Oh uh, yeah, here, um, I was afraid of getting landed on, so that's why I went over to the side and hit the truck. I figured it was better to take about half a second loss than to take a three second loss from getting knocked down, which is what I'm pretty sure would have happened there if I hadn't done what I did. And then I would be even further behind than I am now. But all that is to say, I believe there is a right way and a wrong way to go about trying to get change. It is one thing to be respectful, be civil, just show the facts and the figures and everything like I was trying to do in my video about the event. It's another thing entirely to only keep bashing without anything constructive whatsoever and even cussing at them. Like, that is not going to help the situation and it's probably not going to help Gameloft to hear out your cause. So as a member of the Influencer Program, I'm going to try my best to relay to Gameloft and to anyone else involved just what we want to see in Asphalt 9, the issues, what we have with things that might be in the game right now, because I don't think it's too far gone. I do think there is still hope, and I'm hoping that after this update, maybe in the next update, we'll get a breather, sort of like we did with the first Rimac event on, yeah, the global version of that. That was good. A lot of other events around there were good, like the Veneno special event. Remember that time when we had these nice special events where you didn't have to spend an arm or leg to get the cars? Hopefully we'll get some of that after all of this, and I think even that would serve to help revive the Asphalt 9 community a little bit, because I know right now a lot of people have told me that they are quitting or even moving back to Asphalt and I've also gone back to Asphalt 8 to some extent as well, not quitting Asphalt 9 of course. So now it's time for my general review about this car. It is a high-end A-class car, highest top speed in the game, but its low acceleration and drifting speed make it not really king on a lot of tracks. It could be king on some of the longer and straighter ones, but I do not think it will be on most of them. Thank you for watching, please like the video if you've enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt and other games content, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!